Hey, you 13s, how's it going, guys? You guys are so funny. Uh, it, you, you guys have had lessons like forever and still getting the times wrong. It, on Fridays, it starts a little bit earlier. <laughs> right, doing really well on the register. Just Jasmine, Ben, Tenzi, and Mika to go. That's it. Well, there's Jasmine. Whoop, whoop. Doing really well. Nearly finished with the register already. Just Ben, Tenzi, and Mika. That's it. And then we can crack on. Guys, we're going to be doing today. Hey, Tenzi, good to see you, dude. Thanks for coming. Glad to see you. Tenzi's in the house. Just Ben and Mika to go. Ben and Mika. Mm, mm. Uh, sorry. It's a lockdown dance. Uh. <clears throat> We're doing well. Ben and Mika to go. And that's it. I know that Ben tends to be late anyway. Uh, today, guys. Uh, there's Mika. Hi, Mika. Fab. Look at that. So just Ben to go. I know Ben tends to be late. So I think at this point, we're only a minute in, doing amazing, minute 10, everyone but Ben. I think I'm going to crack on, folks. I'm going to mark Ben as absent, and then when he appears, uh, I'll mark him as in. Okay, cool, guys. So I'll get rid of the register. There we go. Right. Guys, today we're going to be looking at graphs. Now, we aren't, we aren't a huge distance away from... Uh, uh, the end of the topic, to be fair, guys, I know that might surprise some of you, but the topics are relatively short, especially in unit four. Kinetics is relatively short, equilibrium is relatively short, and then we smash into acid base, which is massive. Um, so I'm just pre-warning you now, you know, a good few lessons ahead here, guys, a full week. You know, you're going to have an end of topic test. One of the things I haven't done yet, I haven't yet made the year 13 support sheet. I'm on it. I will start. It came into my head today. I was, I'd suddenly realized that I was going to share the AS one with the year 11s who've begun A-level chemistry. And I haven't started the A2 one yet. But I will make grounds on that ASAP. In fact, of course, what I will do, I will prioritize kinetics. Um, what's the topic you're doing with Miss Childs at the minute? Is it Red Ox? I'm assuming it is from Unit 5. Redox is hard. Like, holy moly, Unit 5 Redox is tough, guys. Um, so I'll prioritize whichever topics you're doing first so you guys can start seeing the exam questions because I'm very aware that even though I've set you these homeworks, they're still not quite at the A2 level yet. And I'm very aware of that. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll, of course, set you guys a homework now that we're coming to the end of, um, <clears throat> end of orders. Um, I'll set you guys a homework, which is at an A-level standard. I'll go through some papers, drag up some questions. I'll make booklet one. Yeah. Uh, is unit four or five content, more content heavy? Um, good question, that Nikita. They're very different. Very, very, very different. Unit four is predominantly calculations. Uh, unit five is heavy knowledge base. Yeah, you've got to know all your colors. Oh, my God, we need to get you guys going on colors. You've got to learn all your colors, and I mean all your colors. You've got about 50 colors to learn for unit five. It's heavy knowledge-based content and and lots and lots of understanding. The calculations are relatively limited. Eight unit four is the calculation heavy side. Um, but anyway, let's crack on. I still haven't got Ben in the room, which is annoying me, uh, but let's crack on folks. Let's get on with this. So share screen. Let's crack on with graphs. Oh, I'm there. Ben, ben arrives. There you go, Ben. Good job. Ben, how are you always five minutes late? How is that even possible, dude? Ha! Right. Okay, guys. So this is where we left off. I didn't set you guys any more homework. Uh, I, I, I was having tablet trouble. Uh, so today's lesson is on A2 kinetic graphs. Yeah, so let's crack on. A2 kinetics. And we are looking at graphs. Okay, so we've the first thing we need to do is we need to remind ourselves of the AS kinetics graphs. Yeah, so learning objectives. I actually put them onto the U. I'm trying my best, fashionably late. Ugh. Yeah, uh, my learning objectives are very A2 focused, so I'll put those on anyway. Yeah, so no graph types. Yeah, there aren't many. 
no graph types, only three, no graph types. Understand half-lives in chem. Understand half-lives, half-life, brackets, conch. And then we need to do, be able to use graphs. It really, it's the knowledge of the graphs really that will really support this. Yeah, use graphs, be able to, remember knowledge, understand, able to, you got three, I've got all three today, guys, Kua. <laughs> Uh, use graphs to determine order. Yeah, graphs to determine oop, order. Um, yeah, I've also got to look at the practical aspect of this as well from unit three. Um, I'm, I'm probably aware that there's probably more like four graphs, graph types really. I'll do the main four, but then we'll do a practice. We'll do a lesson based on unit six, kinetics looking specifically at how these can be done practically. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is a quick AS recap of graph types. Yeah, so AS chem, AS, I'll just put AS kinetics, we know it's chemistry. Yeah, AS kinetics, graphs. And now we didn't see many graphs in AS kinetics. Yeah, the main three, number one is we saw a max EB. Yeah, this is kinetics. These are not lost. Yeah, I need everyone to recognize that the AS chemistry is not gone. This is part of the problem with chemistry. You know, unlike history where, you know, you study the Romans and then when you're done with the Romans, you move on to the Victorian era and then you never have to look back at the Romans again. Chemistry does not work this way. Yeah, chemistry, everything is layers. Chemistry is like an onion. Yeah, it's like ogres. Yeah, every, every, every new layer that you gain is being supported by the previous many layers that exist. So we've got max EB graphs. I'm going to put max B graphs. We know these. Yeah. These are not gone. Yeah. Far from it. These are not gone. You're still going to need them. They still appear in multiple choice. Yeah. I don't like the little tail in there. Yeah. Oh, still not good. This I'm trying to do it on a tablet. There we go. Uh, it's reasonable. We know that uh, we've got energy at the bottom and number of particles on the Y, number of particles. Yeah. And we know that the total area, we've, we've got all the AS bits of this graph. We know this. Yeah. We know that this here is the mode. Yeah. We know that this one here is your average, your median yeah, AVG, we know that the total area under the graph is total number of molecules, total number of molecules. We know, molecules, we know, uh, we know that this section of the graph here is linear from zero, We're trying to do that in yellow and it failed. This section here with the graph is linear. Yeah, we know that we can do higher temperatures and lower temperatures, higher temperatures, straight line until you hit it and then curl off immediately and then make it roughly the same area. And then if you want to go cold graph, we go steeper and higher and then aim to come down on the top of that graph and then never touch it again. We, there we go. So we know we can use these maxi Bs. We've been using them for ages in AS, you know, but they're not gone. This is what I just need all of you guys to be aware that, that this just didn't work at all. That's amazing. Yeah, it's my blue line, which is irritating me. There we go. So we know these. Yeah, we know maxi Bs. Next type of graph that we picked up at AS is we picked up true rate graphs. And this one I need. I need this today for A2. Yeah, rate graphs. And you guys found everybody. It's not just you. Everybody finds these. Everybody finds these hard. Ah, roller. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm using the ruler. Yeah, I'm going to do it. There we go. There we go. That's too long. There we go. That'll do. So everybody hated these graphs. Yeah, I know we did. So we've got time on the bottom axis. You need this. And that could be in seconds per second or it could be per minute. You know, it could be either. Yeah, minute. Uh, I shouldn't do that. I'll just do second slash min, whichever one they give you. Yeah. And then, of course, we've got over here concentration of product or concentration of reactant, depending on the type of graph. 
So if we do, I'm going to highlight these in different colors. So if we've got the concentration in product in green, we know that our rate graph does this. Yeah, we know that our rate graph, I'm going to try and make that a little bit better. There we go. That's our, that's our concentration of product graph. Yeah, because you realize it starts at zero because there's no product and over time product is produced. If we had done this as a reactant, let's look at this in terms of being a reactant. Yeah, with the graph is reversed. All of these are needed. Yeah, I can't do A2 kinetics graphs without these. So the reactants are going to start off at the height of the products. Yeah, we realize that the graph finished became level at this point here, and it would be something like that, and then it's level at the bottom. There we go. Something akin to this. I don't want to make a bear effort though. Hey, look at that. Not bad. I uh, prefer it to be, I don't know. I'm trying to match the other guy. Oh, maybe my second one was a better one. It's not great. It's meant to be the polar opposite of the other one. Yeah. And... Oh, it's so close. Ah, one more go. Uh, it's not great. Whatever. It'll do. <laughs> Whatever. So, and what we also, so what did we gain from these graphs? Well, we gained, the, the questions at A-level are hard because what they'll do is they then use these graphs. They're picking apart people's understanding of kinetics. We know kick-ass we've been using since GCSE, some of you since the start of AS, knowledge Collision, knowledge of particle theory, collision frequency, number of particles with activation energy, number of successful collisions. We know this. We've been running kick-ass, and we've been using it on our five factors. Yeah, we've been using it on temp. We've been using it on conch. We've been using it on surface area. We've been using it on catalysts, and we've been using it on pressure for gases. Yeah, we've been using this, and then what they then did is they started picking you guys up to pieces with this, by showing you what was happening if I did, if the graph altered slightly, they were like, student redoes it, and this is line A, and they would say, what did the student do to cause the rate graph to change the way that it did? And you'd have to go, oh, you increased the temperature. Yeah, you couldn't say increase concentration because if you increase concentration, you'd have more product. Yeah, the increased concentration one would be that. Yeah, it could have been increased surface area. Could have been that one. Yep, could have been that. They could have added a catalyst, absolutely. Could they have raised the pressure? Well, it depends on how they raised the pressure. They could have decreased the volume to raise the pressure, but they couldn't have added more gas. There's, they, they pick you now apart on your understanding of these. Okay, so now that we've kind of considered the idea of how these graphs change, and these don't go away. These are common A2, yeah, common A2 questions. And the reason why is because they're hard. Yeah, every single, per, every single student I have ever taught has never found these, every single one of them finds these hard. Yeah, it takes practice. So please, please, please do try and make the effort to do so. Yeah, do practice these questions. They do exist there on the support document. Please have a go at using them. Yeah, I've also got many of them on the super booklets. I don't know if I've attached the super booklets to the AS support sheet yet, um, but I really need to, it's something that's on my mind as well. So please remember, these are common A2, do need to have. The next thing that we picked up from these graphs, this we are continuing with the AS theme, yeah? We have to go back to another one of these graphs. Yeah, so here's our rate graph here. Ah, trying to make that better. There we go, that's better, that was a lovely one. Yes, yeah, so we've got time on the bottom, and we've got number of, we've got uh, concentration of products changing, each likes to put a P in there. Product, and that's gonna be increasing, of course. And this is a product because it's going up from zero. So one of the things that we learned, and this is where it comes into important for the A2. Yeah, rate. We picked up at AS, we had a rate equation. Yeah, rate equals change in concentration of product, change in concentration of product over change in time. Now, it didn't need to be product. You could have also done it as rate equals we could have or rate equals cha mm, change in concentration of reactant versus change in concentration change in time we could have had that but the rate would have been reversed it would have been a negative value because the concentration of the reactants is going to decrease so you flip the sign at the end of it yeah don't forget to flip the sign we also came across one more as well which was we also came across one over t 
Yeah, we also came across that one. Now, this, this one here does appear at A2 fairly frequently, not really so much at GCSE, but this graph here, we can use this one over T. We can only use this equation when we have a fixed amount of product. Uh, I'm just gonna shrink my pen a bit. It's a bit fat at that stage. Yeah, we're gonna have, this is only used when, oh, I'm gonna put uh, in my notes, only used for fixed amount of product fixed amount of product. Now people go, I don't understand what that means in AS. I remember doing this and I've forgotten it. This is when you're usually dealing with a, a reaction with a color change. Yet yeah, the example of this, e.g., is a, re, a color change reaction. Yeah, color change reaction. Yeah, or a precipitation reaction or a precipitation reaction. I'll put or or a precip precipitation reaction. The one that you guys needed to know for this was the going cloudy. Yeah, everyone remembers this one from GCSE. Yeah, the uh, sodium thiosulfate, Na2S2O3. Yeah, reaction with hydrochloric acid, and it produces solid sulfur. And we remember doing this reaction as it, it was in a conical flask. It was in a conical flask and terrible diagrams today. Really struggling with the pen today. Don't really know why. Uh, we've got and and we've got the, the the cross underneath it. Yeah. So we've got the seeing seeing this at the back there, and then we've got a big fat cross on the piece of paper underneath it, and the solutions on top, and we're kind of looking down on it. Yeah. This one was one over T. Yeah. Because we were looking to see when it became opaque, and that what that was a one over T example. Now, how does this then relate to the graphs? Well, the reason why this relates to the graph is because the graph is directly related to the rate equation. We realize that the time here is on the x-axis. Yeah, this is the x-axis, of course, and the change in concentration of product is on the y. What that means is that the rate equation is directly related to the gradient. Yeah, we know that these two are related to the gradient, so the gradient of course, which is delta y over delta x, yeah, uh, delta y over delta x, which is exactly the same as this, because we realized that the product is on the y-axis, yeah, which is there, and of course, the time is on the x-axis, which is there. So we realized that we could use rate graphs to determine uh, determine a rate by simply working out the gradient. Now, there were two parts of this that we then did at AS level. We also did this actually technically as GCSE, but it very, very, very rarely gets asked. Super rare at GCSE. But this here, the yellow line, and this is where I need to be careful with my color coding. If I'm going to color code, I need to make sure that I'm using different colors. So this line here, and this is where I need to, I'm labeling everything. This line on the graph, this is a key. Yeah, key for the graph. This line here, now this is where it's important, folks. This is the initial rate. Yeah, the initial rate. And I'm hoping that you guys have picked up from the questions and the examples that I've given you so far on using stepping and rate data in terms of concentration in the table. Look at the homework. This is where we have a look at the homework. Just to show you this, uh, documents year 12 13 homework kinetics one i've also got kinetics two which i think you guys haven't done yet Eek. there's kinetic ones and look there it is initial rate whoa that didn't do what i was expecting it to do so it's the initial rate we only ever use the initial rate in in when we're using uh age in a2 kinetics yeah if we want to do anything except for the initial rate, let's change my pen color, let's go for purple. If I wanted to find the rate at this given point here, I have to take a tangent. That's not a good tangent. That's not a good tangent either. No, that's not a good tangent. I'm suddenly realizing I play, I think I need to use a ruler for this. Let's use my ruler. Tangents are a nightmare. I need to have the ruler be evenly distributed on either side of that curve. Yeah, so it's gonna leave here and leave here. That's about even. So I can then draw my line. There's my tangent. Yeah. So if I take that tangent of that point, I will get a delta Y and a delta X. Yeah. There's my delta Y and there's my delta X from my tangent. This is very rarely asked at GCSE, but it does get asked at AS level in unit two. So I'm just going to do this one here, which is uh, rate on curve. 
rate on curve. Yeah, tangent. Yeah, so anyway, now I, the reason why I have to go back to that is because we're about to see two new types of graphs, three new types of graphs if you include Arrhenius, which is not really a graph type so much as a graph question, um, but it's always nice that I tend to use it. Okay, so now that we've kind of gone over the AS rate graphs, we need to now start with the A2s. So, okay, let's underline our notes. We have A2 kinetic graphs, and we have three of them, A2 kinetic graphs. And we have three of them. I don't know why I did a lowercase, lol. A2 kinetic graphs. So, type number one, this is where I forget them all. This is our standard rate graphs, really. Yeah, this is just, uh, this is a rate graph, but it's not what you've normally seen. I need to be careful of this, yeah. This is a this is a rate it is a rate graph. I'm actually going to do what's the best way of me to do this? Concentration conk ver, conk oh Steve against Sarah. I've got to remember which way around it. So uh, if you ever say conk against, this is something that I picked up about six or seven years ago. I didn't used to teach against, and I have to now because the problem is they use it in the questions and the students don't know what it means. Conk against rate. Yeah, hang on a minute, just checking that. Uh, this is where I need to draw the graph. Uh, no, it's not. It's rate against concentration. Rate against, just to explain what I'm doing, rate against conk. Yeah, so what that now means is, I've got, we know that we've got delta Y, and the question was at A level. This came up on a couple of a paper about six or seven years ago, and they gave them a horrible, horrible question, which was designed to fool them. And they said, plot X against Y. Well, the question is, which one goes where? Students put X and Y like that because X and Y is labeled on the axis. But if it's X against Y, then the X is here and Y is here. The word against is showing you that the, the against is on the, the Y axis. So this one is going to be rate against concentration of whatever my reactant is. Yeah, of concentration, don't actually need, there you go. Rate against concentration, we remember for A2, that square brackets means concentration. So, okay, now rate, by the way, I'm actually I'm actually gonna call these order graphs. Yeah, these are, these are specifically, I'm gonna put this in red. Yeah, this is an order graph. Ah, come on, Mr. Duncan. Yeah, order graph, that's a better name for this. Yeah, because these graphs are used directly yeah, directly to deduce rate, sorry, directly to use to, de to devise the order of a reactant by, via the rate. Yeah, the third type of graph, sorry, second, I'm not doing very well today with my words. Come on, Mr. Duncan. Second type of graph is a half-life graph. Yeah, half-life graph. Okay, and the third one is an Arrhenius. I always spell Arrhenius wrong. Can someone just Google me on that one, please? I think it's a double R-H-E-N-I-U-S. Can someone check me on an Arrhenius, please? Just check the spelling. That would be really appreciated, folks. First person on the chat. Okay, so what we now need to do is I'm going to get rid of that. An order graph, a half-life graph, and an Arrhenius graph. So let's now do each one of them. So let's do order graphs first. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the capitalization. Arrhenius. Uh, yeah, I spelt it right. Whoop, whoop, double R. Thanks, Nikita. You a star. Oh, thanks, Ben. You were in there first. Didn't even see that. Thanks, Ben. It's because you're in red. Is that funny? Didn't see that because your picture's in red. Fascinating. Order graph. Let's do the order graph. Okay. By the way, year, year 13s, you know me. I, oh, Ben, don't give me a sad face. That's Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Year 13s, can you all do me a massive favor? If you need me to slow down or you have questions, please just post them on the chat and I'll answer them. You know that. Okay, order graphs. Now, the great thing is with order graphs, there are three. We know that there is first order, second order. I shouldn't do them in that. I shouldn't do them now. I should be like zero order. Yeah. Zero order, first order, second order. That's what we know, yeah? Zero, by the way, I'm just gonna do that in the short form, yeah? Zero order, first order, and second order. There you go, zero first and second. We know that in, in A-level chemistry, we don't go beyond that. That is a lovely, lovely limiting point for kinetics here, which is lovely. 
What that means is there are three graphs. So if I have, let's do three graphs. All the graphs are going to be the same, of course. We're using these graphs directly to work out an order. So what we're going to do is we need to change the concentration of a reactant and we need to measure the initial. Yeah, and that's important. Measure the initial rate. Yeah, initial rate. We know this. Yeah, we can't use any other rate. The reason why it, they, they have asked this question, why is initial rate used to determine orders of the reactants? And that's because... The, re the, the rate at the the initial rate is constant. Yeah. Question. Just adding this as a nota bene, adding this on. Yeah. Oh, nota bene. Nota bene. Got to say it with an Italian accent because obviously it's it's Latin, so it's Italian. So um, we've got uh, initial rate. Initial rate is constant. Yeah. That's the that's so important. It's constant. What that means is this is the only part of the graph that therefore, therefore used to find K. Yeah, that's what we're using this for. Yeah, used to find K. Okay, so if I had a reactant and it was zero order, let's do this as zero order, then first order. Yeah, first order. And then second order, let's just do the graphs in a nice sequence like that. Right, guys, on the chat, please. Um, in fact, I'm going to ask Ben. Ben, can you do me a favor? If A is zero order, what would you predict this graph now to look like? Yeah, we. If, if you understand what zero order is, then you should be able to predict how this graph is going to appear. Can you tell me? Let's see how long it takes him. Uh, I'm then going to ask Nikita, since you chipped in before, and I was really appreciate that. Nikita, can you tell me what you think? It's a straight line. Uh, but hang on, Ben, that, that's not enough. You're right, it is a straight line, but there's something special about it. There's different types of straight lines, Ben. Yeah, which straight line is it? Yeah, there are so many. Which one of these is the important bit? All of those are straight, but only one of them is correct. Downwards, no. Ha. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? It's not downwards. Because, Ben, if this was down, let's consider your answer. If it was going down, you'd be saying that as the concentration, we know that the concentration of A is zero here, and it is increasing. We know this. I'm going to put high. Yeah, you're saying that as A increases, the rate slows down, goes through the origin, upward, directly proportional. <laughs> Lol. Um, Nikita, I was going to give you the first, yeah, first order one. Are you doing the first order one? Ben says now upward. So, Ben, you think that if A is zero order, then I thought it's horizontal. Thank you, Donna. Donna's there to save the day. The graph is horizontal. Why? Wait. Uh, yeah. The reason why is we know from our previous questions, if something is zero order, yeah, if let's, I, I can't remember which one of these was zero. Yeah, times two. Oh, A times two times four second. B, oh, I've got to do step. No, I don't have to do stepping. Ah, B in this case here is zero order. So look what happens. If I increase the concentration of B, then the rate doesn't change. RIP. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Are you saying rest in peace? That's, a, that's an odd thing to say. Now, guys, I, I always teach a little bit beyond day level. So this is the correct graph. Yeah, that's, that's the graph for zero order. Yeah, you have to learn that. However, can I just add a tiny bit as well to this? I'm just taking you up a tiny extra step. The graph actually looks like this. Yeah, the graph actually looks like this. But you don't need to know that. Yeah, you don't need to. I'm actually going to do that slightly differently. I'm going to use the ruler for this. Yeah, I'm going to use the ruler. So I need an extru almost entirely vertical line up, yeah? And then I need an entirely horizontal line across the top there. There we go. That's what the graph actually looks like, yeah? Now, you don't, this bit here is not, not needed at A level, but 
it, I'm, I, oh, I always teach it. It hasn't yet been on an exam, but I'm waiting for it to do so. Yeah. The reason being is it has this, you can't, the, the graph cannot go across this gap. Yeah. The reason being it cannot do that. And the reason why is because we know that A is needed for the reaction, even though that it's not in the rate determining step and it's not in the rate equation because it's zero order. If we don't add A, then the reaction won't occur. We know it's still a reactant. Yeah. So the graph can't go completely horizontal, but in the, in the exam, you would draw it as such. Yeah. In the, in the actual exam, you will just draw a straight line across. Yeah. But I just want you to understand that this is not really the case. Yeah. It is extremely vertical. Yeah. Very, very steep. And then it becomes zero almost immediately. Yeah. Okay. So the first order. Uh, Nikita, what do you think the first order is going to do if A is first order and this is the initial rate? What's my graph going to look like, Nikita? It's nice to give us our units, moles per dm cubed down here and moles per dm cubed per second. Yeah, sorry that that's just so rubbish. My pen was too fat. Directly proportional. Thank you so much, Nikita. She's on it. She's on it. I'm just going to shrink my pen to write my units. Rate moles per dm cubed ah, per dm cubed per second. My hand was ahead. Through origin. Absolutely. Thank you, Nikita. So in your exam, you're going to draw this. That's the real graph in your exam. Can I now add on the extension? Yeah, I'm going to add on the extension, the A-level extension. And this does get asked, but not really from a grasp, graph perspective. Yeah, eventually, that's what you will recognize at A level, that's what you're going to see. Yeah, straight line through the origin. However, I'm just gonna give you the extension bit because in reality, what will happen eventually is it will level off. It will flatten off at the very extreme ends. Yeah, and this section does get asked about, but never drawn on the graphs. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to appear one day. Yeah, so, and this is a note of Bene. Right, on the chat, please, guys. I've had Nikita, Ben, and Donna chip in. Can I please ask? I'm gonna ask Rhea. Rhea, can you, can you please, on the chat, tell me why you think it has leveled off at extremely high concentrations? I need what... What would we describe A as being? That's what I want. Wonder how long it's gonna take her to appear. I'm also going to put it to Kayun and Emma as well. You guys can also chip in as well, just in case she's not there for any reason. Yeah, it'd be nice to see all three of you chip in. That would be grand. It's like me monitoring that everyone's still watching and obviously just trying to give a bit of vari variability to the people answering the questions. Okay, I think Rhea's Oh, wait, AFK. <laughs> oh, there's Ria. Yay. It is no longer a limiting factor. Um, so can you now give me that word? Uh, oh, it's in excess. Look at that beautiful tag team there, limited by other reagents. Well done. Kayun and Ria, spot on. You're both correct, but Kayun is giving me the word I need and what you're going to need. So we would describe this. This is another nota bene. Yeah, and I'm going to put the nota bene on top of the graph, which is probably a bit odd, really. Yeah, nota bene. Yeah, nota bene, which is um, A, A has, um, A is in excess. Yeah. So that there. So what this means is it leads me to another nota bene. Now I realize that that's so tiny. I'm going to get rid of all these lines now, make them all vanish. Um, I'm going to put the, another note to Bene here because this is actually more, kind of, it's the same thing just in slightly different words and you'll probably understand why. Yeah, note to Bene, and I'll put this one in a bubble, in a spangly box. Yeah, all, all reagents, all reagents will become zero order, become zero order at extreme extreme concentrations extreme concentrations due to being 
in excess. Yeah. So that there, kind of important that one there, folks. Yeah. All the agents will become zero order eventually. Okay. So second order. What's this graph going to look like? Yeah. So this one, again, I'll just extend that a little bit. Yeah. So then we've got initial rate here. Initial rate. I shouldn't put IR. It looks like IR infrared. Yeah. I'll shrink my text. Yeah, initial rate, initial rate moles per dm cubed per second. Yeah, and we've got concentration of A, and this time it's second order. What's the graph going to look like now? I'm going to ask, can I have Ivan? Can I have Tenzi? And uh, Mika would be wonderful. Dat, maybe anyone else who hasn't really chatted yet would be lovely to see them chip in. What do you think this graph's going to look like? Considering we've seen the others so far, by the way, I'm going to just quickly simplify. <laughs> Zero. First, what's second going to look like? It will curve upwards. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, X to the power of two. I like it. We know this. Yeah, it's kind of, it's lovely because the graphs are all so different. Yeah, which is lovely. We're going to get this line here. Mia, what really determines how long it takes for something to be in excess? Is it reactivity or is that dumb? Ah, ha! That is, that is funny. Um, no, it, it, reactivity will be part of it, I guess. Because um, what determines when something is in excess? It's usually, it's usually actually what's called a sterically hindered situation. You're not going to know that word. Uh, I'm just going to give you the graph. Woo. Uh, it's more than that. Woo, there we go. Yeah, we, it's going to give you this really quite extreme. It's, it's more like that, really. There you go. That's better. That's what I like. So a nice extreme curve there for a second order. So Ria, to explain excess, I, I love your question. It's great. To explain what excess is. So I think most people would understand, and we recognize from, you know, key stage three, you know, and, and GCSE, you know, for, for there to be a reaction, Particles have to collide. Yeah. Well, what I think everyone here would recognize, well, oh, well, if I double the number of collisions, if I double B, look, the collisions has doubled, the rate's going to double. And is steric hindrance when its shape is likely in the way of, the, of it reacting? You mentioned it once. Yes, Rhea, it is. Yeah. Now, you, well done, Rhea. I am so impressed with you. Well done. Steric hindrance is usually to do with the shape of the molecule and how that hinders it. In this case, it's not about shape. So I think everyone would look at that picture and go, yeah, rate doubles, rate times two. Yeah, well, would you agree that there's a limit to this? Yeah, so how far could we go? Well, the, the, the limit will be how many bees can I fit around it? Yeah. How many to the point where no more bees are going to be able to get in that this B over here, if I just do B and then go B, 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 B. Yeah. And we go, this guy's going to be very sad. Yeah. This, this B over here. Ah, oh, ah, there we go. This B over here is going to be very sad. It's going to be a sad B. The reason being is the other bees are going to be getting in the way. Yeah. And now he's in excess. I have got so many bees that I just cannot add any more collisions to this. It's just going to become impossible. Does that make sense? It's a very simplistic way to look at it, but I quite like the analogy. It works well. Yeah. You could just imagine swamping somebody. Yeah, so many that you're not, it's going to just, it just doesn't matter if I add any more to this. Yeah. They're not going to, they're going to be waiting for the other bees to get out of the way. Cool. I'm glad you liked it. Glad it makes sense. So, okay, so we've done order graphs. Yay, Dick. Woo. done it. Next, half-life graphs. Um, I didn't do the Arrhenius graph with the other classroom, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, gonna do the same thing with you guys. I'm gonna leave it at half-lives today. Yeah, so next one is, I'm gonna make my pen a bit thicker, I think. Yeah, so this is now half-life graphs. Right. Now, these are the first thing I th I'm going to do this slightly differently than the way I did the other class. So is the order of reactants determined by like its molecular structure and steric hindrance rather than maybe the mechanism or is it both? 
Ah, oh, Kayun, it's both, but the mechanism at A2 plays a much greater in the mechanism in reality plays a much larger, larger part in the determining of an order. Uh, but the molecule's shape and structure will definitely cause it to then change it. So, for example, I talked to you guys about how you can have orders which are decimal places. Those decimal places will probably be determined by the fact that a molecule's structure is influencing the way that they're colliding and, and the, the likelihood of a successful collision. So that's when you start seeing fractions in your in your orders yeah, but most most of it, 95% of the order is determined by the mechanism. Sorry I keep asking about this. To summarize, is excess when the max number of molecules can surround another reactant? Um, yes, Rhea. Yeah, but, but yes, but no. Um, Okay, I've got to go back to my graphs. So hang on a minute. Would you agree that the excess in the first order graph that I mentioned, that one, that excess there is caused exactly as you described, max number of molecules surrounding a reactant. Yeah, that one would be a good example of how that would probably make sense. But there is more to this in reality um, because, okay, because what about what about this one, guys? Why this is zero order? This, look, in, if if that applies to this one, then this entire section here is excess. That's weird. Why would that be in excess almost immediately? The reason being is because it doesn't play a role in the slow step in the reaction. Yeah, we'll be talking about those in more detail later, and hopefully it'll become a bit clearer. Um, but it, Rhea, the answer is sometimes to your question, but not always. Oh, just I realized I didn't give you the extension for the other graph, did I? A second order reactant will do this eventually. It will do, will eventually level off. It will. Yeah, there you go. And that is now in excess. All reagents will become zero order if they are in excess. They will. Yeah, we often do it deliberately in practicals, which is part of the practical stuff that we have to talk about. Um, right. Uh, Ria, I hope I answered your question. Kayun, did I answer your question? Yeah, I feel like I want to put those answers on, on my lesson because the questions are so good. Yeah. The order of a reactant is determined primarily 95% by the mechanism and 5% by the structure of the molecule and the, and, and, the, and the steric hindrance that's happening between molecules. That answers, that answers Kayans. Rhea, is the max number of molecules the reason why something is in excess? The answer is sometimes, but not always. Sometimes the fact that the molecule doesn't take place in a slow step in the reaction means it will become in excess even if the molecules aren't at max surrounding. I hope that makes sense. Whoa, man, great questions, amazing questions. Love it. Yeah, I should write them down merely, but still. Okay, half-life graphs. So first thing I need to do is I need to explain to you what half-life is in chemistry. Yeah, so you, anyone who here who does physics will be like, I know what a half-life is. Yeah, it's the, the, the amount of time it takes for a radioactive isotope to decrease by half. Yeah, so in, in chemistry, it's all about concentration. So the time, half-life. Sorry. Um... Half-life, <laughs> half-life, the time, the time taken, the time taken for concentration of reactant, concentration of a reactant, yep, yeah, of reactant to decrease by two, by half, decrease by 50%, I like it. Makes total sense. Yet the time it takes for the concentration to half. We're done. Yeah. So what would the graph look like? Yeah. What would the graph look like? This is not actually as bad as it, it seems. We go, okay. So it's the time taken for the concentration to drop. Yeah, by half. So would you agree time is on the axis on the x-axis? Let's put it units. I'll just put units. Yeah. 
on the y-axis is the concentration of our reactant, moles per dm cubed. Right. Now, this one is slightly more tricky because students think that half-life would be exactly the same as a standard rate graph, but it's not. It's not the same. So look, look at what, now this is where I'm gonna teach this rather than getting you to predict them. So what does a zero order graph look like? Zero order for R, yeah? What's it look like? It looks like this. Whoosh, ruler, I've got a ruler, I should use it. It's a straight line. Gotta love it. It's a straight line. I, oh, I don't want to overrun like that. Don't want to overrun like that. It's no point. Don't need to. There we go. It's a straight line. Right. Let's now explain why. Yeah. The reason being is first thing, can someone tell me why the concentration of R is decreasing in the reaction? Why is it dropping at all? First question, question one, why does conch of R drop? AS chemistry, in fact, GCSE chemistry. Yeah, answer. Why does it drop? Second question. Um, it's being used up. Thank you, Dat. Answer. R is being used up, being used up. Thank you, Dat, great job. Yep, brill. Okay, so why is this zero order? The reason being is, look at the graph. The graph is, so this graph here is changing R's concentration over change in time. It's our bloody rate equation. Sorry, I didn't mean to say bloody. Yeah, it's our rate equation. We realize that from this graph, from these graphs, from half-life graphs, we can do this bullet point, half-life graphs, uh, gradient, gradient of half-life graph is the rate, equals the rate. Okay. So look what's happened. Oh, the gradient is constant. Isn't it awesome? It all makes sense when you kind of do it. Yeah, if I take uh, the gradient at any point, yeah, this is delta Y and this is delta X and it is consistent throughout the whole thing. Yeah, the rate is the same at every single point on that line. What that means is, now just consider what this is telling us. I, I don't even want those. Yeah, I'm just going to put gradient equal. Yeah. So gradients, gradient fixed. What that means is that as R is being used up, the rate isn't changing. It should change because if it made an impact on the rate as R is being used up, we would expect the rate to decrease, but it's not. A zero order half-life graph is a straight linear decrease. Amazing. What does the next graph look like? Let's do the next one. Okay, next graph. I'm running out of time. I've got seven minutes left for break time. Okay, first order. What would a first order graph look like? First order, R's concentration, first order, and time. What would we expect to see here, folks? We expect to see this. Yeah, a nice, steady, try again. A nice, steady decrease. Let's look at why. The reason by, if we call this concentration the start at 10, and this is zero, the time taken for it to get to halfway down, there's five, there's halfway. Let's measure the time. Yeah, we need to measure the half-life. Yeah, there we go. The half-life there is T, well, that is T1. That is half-life one. I should call that half-life one. 
Yeah, right, now we need to wait for it to get to 2.5. And what you notice is a rather interesting thing. Yeah, it's the same gap. Yeah, in, and then if I go to the next one, go to the next one, gone a bit low there. Gone a bit low. There we go. The half lives are the same. Yeah, because it's slowing down in a linear progression, as seen in the first order graph. It's slowing down in a linear way. So we've got half the concentration. Therefore, the time it's going to take for it to halve again will be exactly the same, which is kind of cool that. It's really clever. Half-Life 1, Half-Life 2, and Half-Life 3 are all exactly the same. Yeah, nota bene. Half life, half life does not change. Doesn't change in, doesn't change for first order. Yeah, they're the same. So what does the second order look like? Okay, let's now do the second order. Yeah, let's go second order, rate, um, half life graph. We've got R to the power of two and time in units. You've got to remember, don't forget your units. Yeah, units of time, whatever they may be, moles per dm cubed. I didn't do it for the other graph. I know I'm just, I'm just filling it in. So what would this one look? This is extreme. Yeah, we start up here at 10. But it's a very extreme graph. Yeah, so there's five. Yeah, look what happens to the half-life. Yeah, so at five, the halfway point, there's half-life one, HL1. Right, I'm going to halve again. Ah, that's interesting. The half-life is longer, half-life two. Look what happens to half-life three. There we go. Half-life three. HL3. So it's getting longer and longer. And by the way, there is extensive maths for this. You can calculate the changes in half-life, but I'm not going to do it with you because you don't need an A level. And I hated it at uni. Ha! Okay, we're done. I hope that all makes sense. One, it's been a really good lesson that, folks. Really enjoyed it. I'm actually going to make all of this stuff bigger if I can. Make it larger in my notes. That brings me to the end of half-life graphs, which is great. So let's go back to my learning objectives. Okay. So in fact, the great thing is we know our graph types. Yeah, we know those. Let's do it in red. Yeah. We know our graph types. We haven't done our heinous, but we know it exists. We now understand what's happening with half-life concentration and bear graphs, and we can use both of our graphs to determine order. Next lesson, Arrhenius. Yeah, right, guys, I'm going to look at that flip and wowzer to the letter. Blimey, that was an intense lesson. Guys, we're done. Sorry about that, guys. It was a hard lesson, that. I hope it all made sense. I hope you guys all have a nice rest of your day. It's been great to see you guys. I'll post kinetics too on your, uh, for your homework if you haven't already done it. I've got another kinetics one that I'd like to have a look at. I'll see if I can pick out some graph questions for you guys to see as well. They vary between a long answer and multiple choice. Um, but otherwise, guys, have a great rest of your day. See you later, guys.